So the preposition of is about possession, right? Wrong. Can I say the car of John? Nope. Now, the dictionary does say that one of the meanings of the preposition of is possession. And that's true. It is a surface application of the logic. It's possible. But that's not the core idea. That's not the logic. And so I want you to forget that for now. Okay? Just don't attach those two together. The preposition of seems very, very simple. And in a way, it is. But especially if you come from a language like Spanish or French that has a Latin base, this little preposition can be extremely confusing. In fact, even if you are an advanced speaker, there might be some uses of the preposition of that will surprise you. So don't underestimate this lesson. Now, the very first thing we have to talk about really quick is the pronunciation of this word because many 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 english learners pronounce this word and the word off very similarly these sound completely different and it often is a point that makes you harder to understand of is a schwa sound plus the sound v it's spelled with an f but it's v if you don't know what the schwa sound is, I have a video right here for the pronunciation course. So this is of, of. We often drop the V. That's a different point. We won't worry about that here. But that vowel sound has to be a schwa sound. Very important. In the word off, it's that fifth vowel in the back, ah. Link to that video right here. Off, and that does have an F sound. So make sure that you are pronouncing it correctly because it will make you much easier to understand. So what's going on with this preposition of? How can something so small, so basic, so common, it's the most common preposition in English, how can something so seemingly simple cause problems? Well, there's a trick. Before we actually talk about the logic itself, there's one important concept that you have to understand. And this actually might be controversial, but the preposition of simply shows the relationship of something to itself. I'll say that again. The preposition of simply shows the relationship of something to itself. The preposition of is sort of just the most basic of connectors. We know that the definition of a preposition is to show the relationship between two things. And for all other prepositions, there is not just the connection there in the preposition, but also the specific meaning of that preposition based on the logic. So if we say on, right, a very simple example, the keys are on the table. So that shows the relationship and it connects keys and table. The preposition of doesn't have any special meaning in itself. That's why I said that it shows the relationship of something to itself. Now that isn't always easy to see. And as we go through some of these examples, I will sort of point out that idea but keep that in mind as we talk about the logic and the example sentences. So what is the logic of the preposition of? Well, it has two parts, but these parts are more like two sides of the same coin, two ways to look at the same thing. The first part of the logic or the first side of the coin is the idea of a part. The second part of the logic or the second side of that coin is the idea of content, which includes something being made of something else. Now, I know that can be confusing and very abstract. It will make a lot more sense as we go through the examples. And let's go ahead and look at these examples. Just keep that in mind as we continue. Let's look at the examples in group one. 
The keyword or phrase for this group is part. The last page of the book is blank. This one is extremely simple. A book has a first page, a last page, and many other pages. Each of these pages is like one individual piece or part of the book. So page is a more specific version of the word part. Another way to say this is the book's last page is blank. As you can see, in this case, we can also use possession with apostrophe S. Today is the first of June. June has 30 days, and the first day is one of them. So the first day is one part of June. Day is a more specific word for part in this case. 30 days of the month, 30 parts of the month. Another way to say this is, today is June 1st. This is the more common way to say it. I've never been north of Los Angeles. Note that this sentence does not mean the north part of Los Angeles. Instead, it means any location that is in the direction north starting from Los Angeles. If you want to talk about the north part of Los Angeles, we say, I've never been to North Los Angeles. Now we're talking about the top area of the city on a map. So how does the example sentence mean a part? We're looking at all the area outside of Los Angeles, the rest of the world, or the rest of the country at least, and based on that area, we're talking about the part of it that is specifically northward from where Los Angeles is. Next, he got 17 out of 20 on his test. The test has 20 questions, so there are 20 points in total. He answered 17 questions correctly. In this case, the word point is a specific word for part. So each point is one part of the total score. Next we have, I like the color of the sky at sunset. Color is a part or aspect of the sky. Group two. The keyword or phrase in this group is content. This table is made of wood. If we try to say that the table is part of the wood, that doesn't make any sense. Here, we're talking about the material that something is made out of. The wood is the content or material of the table. It's what the table consists of or is composed of, which is why we usually use the preposition of with those verbs. All of these are different ways to talk about the same idea. Please note that normally when we talk about the contents of a table, we actually mean what's inside the drawers of the table. This is because content or contents is usually used with the meaning to contain what is inside the desk. This table is made from wood. This table is made out of wood. This table is made with wood. This is a picture of a dog. This is one of the reasons why I recommend that you don't think about the preposition of as possession. This is a common mistake. Here, this is a picture of a dog. We're saying that the dog is what you see in the picture. Okay, so how does the logic apply? Is picture a part of dog? It's clear that the dog is in the picture, which means that the dog is the content of the picture. The next example is very, very interesting and a very useful structure. I've always thought of him as an interesting person. The key is this. Him as an interesting person is one single idea. My thought is not part of him, but him as an interesting person is the content of my thought. In other words, when I think of him, the idea interesting person appears in my mind. Notice in this case that we have a verb, thought, plus the preposition of, plus a noun or pronoun, him. I've always dreamed of living by the ocean. The word dream in this context doesn't mean a dream that you have while you sleep. 
it means something that you really want to do. In this case, living by the ocean is one idea or chunk, and it's the content of my dream. So in this case, we have a verb, dreamed, plus the preposition of, plus a second verb, living. In other words, when we use the preposition of with a verb after it, that verb is the content of the verb that's before the preposition of when we use this structure. I like the idea of learning many languages. So now we have a noun and then the preposition of and then another verb. This works exactly the same. In this case, learning many languages is the content of the idea which I like. Group three. The key word or phrase in this group is part and content. When we're talking about the preposition of, remember, this preposition is just the most basic of prepositions. It's just a simple little connector and it basically shows the relationship of something to itself. So this idea of part and content, which are really just two ways of looking at the same thing, they can both apply at the same time, depending on the context and what we're talking about. The main point here is that it doesn't really matter for this preposition. Sometimes one part of the logic might seem to clearly apply and the other part not, but because there are two ways to look at the same thing, it doesn't matter. I drank five cups of coffee. Imagine you have a big pot of coffee. You take one cup of it. That's one part of the total amount of coffee in the pot. So here, cup is a specific word for part. This sentence is also about content. What is in the cup? Coffee. Before we continue, there is a very important idea that we have to talk about. When we're talking about the logic of prepositions, there are what I call one-way prepositions and two-way prepositions. Now, there are actually a couple different ways that this idea can apply, but most prepositions are one-way prepositions. So that means that just as you expect, the logic applies with the flow of the sentence from left to right. The keys are on the table. However, a two-way preposition can apply both ways. With the preposition of, we actually see that with a part, we go from left to right. Something is part of something else. But you probably notice that when we talk about content or what something is made of, the logic actually applies in the opposite direction. It flows from right to left. Now this doesn't really matter, and don't let this be more confusing than it has to be. It just means that the logic still applies, but it's being applied in a way that is harder to see. Again, most prepositions are one-way prepositions and we don't have this problem. Our next example, he died of a heart attack. In the dictionary, you will find this example labeled as the cause of something. Now this is true. It is a cause or an origin on the surface, but this can be misleading and confusing for the logic or the core idea. So in he died of a heart attack, where is the part and where is the content? A heart attack has a beginning, a middle, and an end which are all parts, as well as a result. Did he survive or did he not? It's easy to see that death, he died, is the result, which means that this is the part of the heart attack that we're talking about. However, in an abstract way, we can also say that the heart attack is the content of his death. In other words, his death is made of a heart attack, or consists of a heart attack. How did he die? A car crash? A stabbing? No, a heart attack. Next, 
I'm afraid of spiders. My fear is not part of spiders. However, spiders are the content of my fear. Now, this sentence is a little weird. Notice that if I have more than one fear, we can say that spiders are one part of my fear. So in this case, we also have a part, but part goes the opposite direction than normal. Normally part is A to B and content is B to A. But in this case, part and content are both B to A. Notice that we can say one of the things, parts, that I'm afraid of is spiders. This is a strange and rare example where the logic goes in the opposite direction. But the main point is this, the logic still works perfectly fine. Remember here, we're talking about two sides to the same coin, and it actually doesn't matter all that much. Now for group four. The keyword or phrase here is part and content plus implied information. Ugh, I know, right? This just, it doesn't end. It doesn't end all this part and content. What is going on? Okay. So this group is the most difficult because the sentences include implied information. So nothing's really changing from group three. It's just there's this extra information that is not said. Implied information is information that's not actually said, but that is there from the context. Normally with the preposition of, the logic will either be A to B or B to A in terms of the sentence flow. But we can also have C, A, B, and C. Let's look at a couple of specific examples. There's a discount of 20% on all purchases. In this case, 20% is the content of the discount. But discount clearly isn't part of 20%, so it's not going both ways. Hmm, what's happening here? Well, that's the implied information. We're saying 20% which implies a total price. 20% is the part. Specifically, it's part of the total price. So what we're really saying is, there's a discount of 20% of the total price on all purchases. It's more like B to A plus B to C. Put another way, B is the content of A, 20% is the content of the discount, but B is also a part of C. The amount that is discounted or removed from the total is part of the original total. If the total price is $10, then 20% is $2, meaning that $2 is the content of the discount because it's the specific amount that will be removed from the total. This is B to A. However, at the same time, we're also implying that $2 is part of the original $10. This is B to C. Another way to think about it. Imagine you have a pie with 10 pieces or parts, and you take two pieces. This leaves eight pieces. Now there's an interesting alternative here. There's a 20% discount on all purchases. If we say it this way, we're using 20% like an adjective to describe the word discount. Now I know all of that can be very confusing, so let's look at one more example here and maybe it will become clearer. I only got two hours of sleep last night. Can you see it? The A, B, and C are moved around a little bit but we still have the same thing happening. Sleep is the content of the two hours. Those two hours, A, consist of sleeping, B. So we have the normal B to A, but where's the part in this sentence? Well, each hour of the night is a part of the night. 
More specifically, we're talking about hours that are used for sleeping. So the total number of hours is the implied information. And then we remove two of those hours because those are the hours that you were sleeping. In the previous example, it was B to C. In this example, it's actually A to C because we're removing the two hours, A, from the implied total number of hours, C. Again, it's like a pizza with 10 pieces. The exact connection between A, B, and C might change, but the idea is exactly the same. Another way to say this sentence, I only slept for two hours last night. Okay, so I know that the preposition of is quite abstract, but that's okay. Let me know down below if you have any questions or comments, and you can continue with the course with the preposition to when you are ready. Thank you so much for watching another English Hacks lesson, and I will see you guys in the next one.